inside of Italian alabaster. This is a piece I made some couple years ago, a few years ago, matter of fact, quite a few years. Well, everything here is for sale. And these uh, sculptures here are also located in the yard here. They're out of Italian alabaster. And, uh, These are some pieces I made a little while back, what have you. And I'd like to just briefly introduce you to Brian Casing. And he manages the gallery art and antique gallery here on 30. Well, I wonder if you could uh, excuse the car folks. I mean, we are right in the outside. Uh, what, what's the address here? 30 Mill Hill Oh, pardon? 30 Mill Hill Road. 30 Mill Hill Road. 30 here on Tinker Street in Woodstock. Um, um, well, are they starting to uh, show? A lot? I notice a lot of uh, art here. And so, on. how long have you had this gallery here? We've been trying to renovate the place for about a year. About a year. Oh, okay. And uh, so the thing is, uh, uh, what are your hours here? We're here from 9 to 9. From 9 to 9. From 9 in the morning to 9 in the evening. Yeah. Very right delightful. 6 o'clock. Oh, okay. And are the people allowed to go inside the residence? Uh, yes, they are. Is, is the antiques and art in there? And what do they have to do? They have to call you or just uh, come? Just come. Or just come knock on the door. That's, well, that's very nice. Yeah, that's... And it's good to know that you wouldn't know that uh, seeing this place here. I've passed here many times since I've moved here to Woodstock. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank I thank you. And he's a very friendly, friendly man. Thanks for bringing your work. Well, I thank you very much. But I, yeah, I have my works here, and he invited me to show my pieces here. And uh, it's great. This is what artists need. They need opportunity, doors open, and, uh, and we'll try to do the rest with the help, of course, of the manager of the place and, uh, and someone who really, who really loves, sincerely, really loves art and what have you like this. So it's good to have someone in Woodstock like that because it does definitely add a dimension that is well needed here. Thank you very much, Brian. And right here is another sculpture of the alabaster. And, uh, It's called Rook to Night One. I got this idea once I saw Fisher and the gentleman who happened to be Russian uh, were having a, a chess game. And it was the, uh, for the championship of the world. And the winning move supposedly was called Rook to Night One. I found that very interesting and I felt, felt that it would be appropriate to sort of put to this piece right here simply because it has sort of a, a chess composition to it and what have you. So, this is why that particular piece was named that. And this is the mermaid piece I made right here. It's hard to see because the light is very bright today. It's out of soapstone. These are very inexpensive pieces here uh, that are affordable.
turtle is made out of Italian alabaster. And there's a piece that I made some time ago. And, and there's a little story that goes with it, I'll make it brief. And the story is that this turtle, which is on the top, here, is sort of disgusted with this other turtle. Almost like human conflicts and what have you. But uh, it disgusted it with this little turtle down here simply because this little turtle right here constantly is bringing up the fact that it thinks that if it pulls in its neck it could crawl to that small hole. And it's very funny. I mean, it's whimsical, you know. We, I mean, it's almost like human, uh, um, human way of, of thinking, people's way of thinking, in the, in the sense that, uh, you know, you keep running into the wall, running into the wall, and they say, hey, if you just open the door, you won't have to go through that. But, you know, sometimes it takes uh, uh, some traumatic events sometimes to make our brain activate, you know. And next to it is this piece of black walnut. You see a reflection because I'm shooting through a uh, through a glass, and there's sunlight in the uh, background. This is out of black walnut, a piece that I made one of my recent pieces, and so on. And, uh, and it's sort of a surreal sort of uh, piece. If you notice the helmet on top, I, for my particular uh, approach when I was starting to make this piece, it's like a computer in a, com in a way in the future. And, uh, and, and it doesn't really need eyes to see. It has all these uh, 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 heat sort of uh, radar things that lets us know if it's going to bump into things and what have you like this. Something of the future is sort of the feeling I wanted. done by a very outstanding sculptor, Glenda Washman. Uh, this is out of clay, and uh, I understand that she starts the piece out, it's mixed with uh, sawdust, the clay is to give a structure where normally people would have to use a armature and what have you in order to support the very thin pieces and complicated uh, ribbons of uh, ceramic here. So you can see there's a lot of thought that really went into this particular piece and it's and it's great that someone really you know they really are thinking you know they really get into the uh, um, into the composition to complication of the composition what have you and uh, it's great to see a great artist I believe this is a woman that you'll be hearing about she's been perhaps been a sculptor for about 10, 11 years, and uh, she's a friend of mine, and uh, she also does stone pieces, but I believe none of her stone pieces are here at the moment, but she does these very complicated uh, abstract pieces out of the ceramic, and it's, and it's refreshing to see someone who is able to stretch the limits of the particular material that we're viewing at the moment. Very complicated. Sort of, I, I would say from my perspective, it's like mechanically organic. And uh, very complicated piece. Beautiful though, very powerful. Very powerful. It sort of gives you an insight into the individual sometime, I believe. The imagination. The vision. And the technical skill. I've seen a lot of ceramic artists, and uh, not because I know her, but <clears throat> the simple fact that I know her work is um, this is uh, perhaps one of the, the, the one of the world's best ceramic artists that there is. Just with the proper exposure and time and what have you, like this. I mean, look at the complication of this.
the piece constantly changes as you go around it. And you see that there's sort of a metamorphosis and composition taking place. And it's, uh, it's incredible to see a great artist like this, you know, work, of works, or what have you. I mean, this speaks for itself. And it's great to see someone who has a mind like this. I'm just giving sort of a, a scan through. Like I've never... really worked with this camera before, so... Pardon for the inconsistencies and the little wiggles that you tend to get now and then. This is a lovely painting right here. Very soothing. Very warm. It's uh, 24 Wiley Lane. I believe it's open on Wednesdays uh, from, I believe, 10 to about 5 o'clock. It's a very charming gallery here in Woodstock. And uh, a 24 Wiley. And uh, it's, a, it's a gorgeous farmhouse that was uh, totally redone in the inside. It is super gorgeous. And I'm sure for those who have been here, you know what I'm talking about. And for those who haven't, uh, it should be something you put on your list. They got gorgeous, gorgeous work here. This is my piece. I'm not able to get in the back, I wish I, the back of the sculpture that is. It took me about, maybe about three months to do this piece. It was a lot of detail and all, very tedious. And it's holding a child, it's sort of like taking a nap. Ishmael, can you explain the uh, pieces here? Uh, yes, I'll be more than glad to. This piece right here is a limestone piece that I was commissioned uh, by a lady and her husband to do. Uh, they had a child who had death, uh, child death crib syndrome. Uh, and uh, the child was eight, eight months old. So I designed a piece and uh, the piece is about a giant heart. It's gonna be a giant heart with these two little angels here that are, because of the position of their hand, uh, ready to take it off in, into, uh, into heaven, or however you wish to call it. And uh, the thing is that uh, this piece right here, I want to create a, a feeling of it being lift. Like you see the, the composition of the body of the angel and what have you, and, uh, and it's in flight. It's taking this heart off into the next page and uh, so what I wanted to create that feeling of them gripping and holding we we as human beings from my perspective tend to want to hold things and and life is about change about changes and uh, and as you see the sculpture in a three-dimensional way you'll notice that on the other side also uh, as as we get there that uh, there is also an other angel, take your time, that, uh, um, that I had done here. And uh, I'm still in the process of adding detail to it and what have you. And uh, this is another angel grabbing from the opposite side of the heart. 
uh, ready to take it into flight. Keep moving this way, perhaps, and uh, and you'll see this others uh, how the form is developing and how it, it, I try to keep a flow going on it. And perhaps way over to your left, you could catch the back of the wing, the details of the side of the wing, and see how the body is sort of a high relief. Uh, how long I, have you been working on this? I've been working on this particular piece here perhaps a, around a month. And I'm trying to get it done before the winter comes. And, uh, what kind of material did you say this is? I, uh, this is a uh, limestone. And uh, it's a very nice material to work in. It's beige, the color of beige, and what have you. And uh, where's it from? Uh, I don't. That I don't remember. Uh, oh yes, yeah, Santa Fe. Excuse me. And uh, so that's what this particular piece is. Perhaps you want to see the other pieces in the uh, in the yard. I sure would. And, uh, Which one would you like to talk about? Oh well, we could talk uh, perhaps this pink alabaster piece. This one is Colorado pink alabaster. It's uh, it's a um, uh, called the messenger, and it's a, a vehicle, sort of a space vehicle. It's very mechanical on a black base. And uh, so that's what that particular piece is. Perhaps we could move to another piece because of the time element involved. And I uh, don't mean to be rushing you folks. And uh, this piece right here is called Emotion in Motion. And uh, these ribbons represent the various different roads that we all travel through our experience uh, in life. And uh, is tried to, I try to emphasize the stress and what have you uh, that is sort of emphasized by the twisting and the turning of the uh, ribbon of stone. And I'll turn it around for you, perhaps could get a view of this. It's very, uh, sort of a complicated piece. I sort of call it mechanically organic simply because of the, uh, of the round uh, element of the spear on the top and the square, other square mechanical elements in the bottom and what have you. And this is called emotion in motion. And uh, so this piece I'm also still working on. I have two or three pieces I work on go from one to the other, but I won't get bored just working on one particular one. Perhaps we could look at this one. This uh, next one is a ceramic one. I would love to claim it as being mine, but unfortunately it isn't. It belongs, uh, it's a creation of my friend Glenda Wasserman. Um, she, she's a master of her media. She's been carving for about uh, 12 years, and she's extraordinary extraordinary artist, very gifted. Uh, matter of fact, in the same film as you, as you have seen in the beginning, the one that was at the Art Association, well, this is the same artist. There's a lot of thinking, creativity, power. I love her work. Her work just mm. totally just fascinates me and is very powerful, making a lot of different statements. And uh, Just to correct you, she's been sculpting for 12 years She'd and carving a portion of that time. And carving a not portion the whole time. of that time. Matter of fact, folks, you just heard it from the mouth of the artist. <laughs> and who could say it better than I? <laughs> and uh, so this is this piece. I love her pieces. I've seen other pieces. She does very large, very large pieces. And this is clay with sawdust in it. And she carves section by section and carves as she builds and what have you. And this is Glenda Washington. Uh, perhaps as she's focus on, focusing on it, folks, pardon. Uh, I'm just looking at the time, and we perhaps have about maybe 15 minutes. 
so perhaps we could just sort of uh, go to the next piece. This is soapstone here. This is a piece I had done a while back uh, without the texture. What's, what I'm in the process of doing is using a file to create texture, to create hair, and uh, to give it more in, uh, uh, of a visual impact to it. And so the child and the mother, if you could take a tight one on the baby's face, is uh, I'm encasing both the mother and the child in this textury sort of hair. And I'm still working on this one also. And uh, this is the mother's face. She could do a tight on that. And uh, so perhaps we could go to the next one. Um, so as you follow, this is an a Glenda Washman in stone sculpture that she's in the process of making. It's a female figure, the thigh, and uh, also you see the arm. And this is going to be the hair right here. Maybe you could get a shot. Maybe even stop your camera for a second. Working on some ideas, doing female figures and what have you, sort of surreal pieces. And uh, this is what I'm doing. And this is white alabaster. This is a woman sort of meditating with her legs underneath there and what have you. And uh, so that's what that particular piece is about. And it's a very uh, 
Yeah, so I'm working out these ideas. I like the, the motion, the lines of, of the human female body. Of, there's just so much happening, you know, so much rhythm and so on like that. I really, this is what I'm working on. I'm trying to get out of my system. And uh, I'm going to do a lot more. I like to do some and uh, execute some in uh, black Belgian marble. Folks, this is the extent of my uh, sculptures. So I'd like to perhaps uh, wrap up the show. And first of all, I'd like to thank you folks for, for your company once again. Um, I'm your host, Ishmael Rodriguez. This is.